why do you think more people don't you like why do you think it's such an amazing tool for you that more people aren't using because you don't i i don't really think you see that many kicks you know it was it's first of all your legs are longer than your arms so uh you know if the, i know the guy's a good striker I'll, i'm a better kicker you know so then i just keep him away with my legs and uh, the thing is though you need to be powerful you know i, I the, the thing you hear me say for the last eight or nine years on inside mma is single kicks never throw a single kick and every we get highlights from around the world every single week for 433 shows we did that people get knocked out because they throw a single kick you know because it's easy to stop and to counter right away so don't do that set it up with punches unless you can kick really freaking hard like a Mirko crow cup or like a jose aldo when you kick somebody really hard to the head you force him to defend with everything he's got and that will buy you a little bit of time so you can get out of the way for the counter but if you just throw a kick out that inside low kick if they stand in one line like the blading position which is still till this day can't understand that they do it in, in mixed martial arts even in the thai boxing i don't get it and, and in boxing i mean i always looked at mike tyson but if they stand in that one blading uh, uh, line they, there's no way they can generate power with their inside low kicks so i said why why would you even bother of moving away from that loki the guy's going to hurt your skin that's about it he's going to stretch his leg take the kick knock him out i mean it's as easy as that but people all the time they need to block these kicks you know i was um that was it with um george and pierre uh oh man jake shields jake shields and george and pierre jake was throwing the inside low kicks but they have absolutely no power on him and george every time when he threw him he jumped back like he let him miss like they were going to decapitate his leg i go just take take the kick take the kick uh, 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 you know trade it for a right straight cross you take the kick by moving into it which hey look at this i automatically load up you know anything you have to do is stretch your arm you can rotate your upper body you get even more power so that's the thing with kicks if you can't kick hard if you can use your legs well you know and you have a guy who's better with his hands i would say use kicks keep them away from you and, and then that's the thing that i noticed is you know you, the only knockouts that you really see are with punches are like people getting knocked out or maybe sometimes it's like they like they're not protecting themselves and then the ref stops it a couple times in recent memory and on yours they, they they're just so hurt that they just stop like the fight stops they're not knocked out but when you get kicked in the stomach they just are in such pain that's crazy you know my by everybody's asking me because I'm, I'm known for body shots for the left hook to the body or left kick left knee i mean i knocked a lot of guys out with that but the 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 way i became a lover of that is my first thai boxing class i got knocked out by it you know i was a badass karateka you know black belt came in tore my whole gym up and then i went to thai boxing and i thought that you know i was a badass but against a professional thai boxer turned out i was not you know and he started my hands were low because of the karate was not allowed to punch to the head so your hands are not next to your jaw so what happens is as soon as they hit your head you're going to have to overcommit to the defending because you're further away from your face so you have to throw it up with with a panic reaction so to say but if you do that yeah automatically you expose your body and of course this guy being the professional knew that and he dropped me right away man it was the worst thing ever being on my knee never experienced anything like that but that was okay i gotta know this you know it's cool i've always i didn't know this uh when i got older no 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 when i was young i knew this cuban guy that defected they used to go to my mom's bar. He drove like a car or something. Wasn't a big drinker. And one day he talked to me, but he spoke to me about boxing as a science. Yeah. You know, he he was a science. And years later, I read something from Bill Wallace, Superfoot. You mm -hmm. know? I love him. And he was talking. And I read this article about Bill in Black Belt, maybe like in, in the 70s, <coughs> when Bruce Lee, you know, after Bruce Lee died, there was this big phenomenon in this country. And he spoke about it like a science, and there really is. There really is a science to kicking and punching. You know, when you go to karate, I went to Goju Karate. You know Rashad? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's his not Rashad? Uh, Rashad. Uh, Eddie oh, Bravo. Yeah, yeah, Eddie yeah. Bravo. Of course. He's black. Yeah, his yeah. dad was my first karate teacher when I came from Cuba. Oh, really? Tell me it's not a small fucking world. That is the craziest thing ever. I got beat up at Central Park. I got stitches. Two days later, I went and showed up. It was an all-black school, black gi, fist. Yep. Everybody was black. He'd make you run the streets barefoot with the gi on. And oh, the yeah? Winter. You had to run by the park where you hung in front of. As bad as So it. the next day when you went to school, those guys were like, oh, you're a karate man. Show us what you got and shit. So I went to all those little tournaments, 
And you learned this karate, but you never spoke about range. No. You never spoke about anything. Then I got into whatever I got into. I quit when I was 15. And then when, when I got into comedy, I always knew that if I trained in a martial art, it would help my comedy. So I got into Tang Soo Do, the Subak Do, mm -hmm. Boulder. That's what that was at the time. And it was a lot of kicks. <clears throat> and I enjoyed it. I did it for about three years, moved out here, didn't do dick. Got back into Subak Do. That was, I moved to the valley and I was fucked. So I went over here. I never kickboxed. They said over here, there's a bunch of great little old schools around here. And then there's one place of America. And I stayed there for about six months until I got knee surgery. And I learned a world in there. Like he spoke about things I had never heard in karate. Yep. But the guy who really put me over the top when I lived in Hollywood, I'd go over there twice a week. Black dude. Earl. Him and his brother had studied from those, the father-son team that they, they're from Hawaii, Japanese Hawaiian dudes. The son is the host of Iron Chef. Oh, wait. Is yes. It, what, Mark is uh, one The Koskis. Yeah, yeah, the Koskis. Yeah, yeah. Father, he lives in my town. His father <coughs> had a school in Denver. Now, here I am living in Boulder. Uh, I was a criminal in Boulder, you know, and I got locked up. Then I came out and got married. So I stayed there for a while. And then I started training, and those guys would always talk about these two black dudes from Denver. And I never looked into it. You know, there was no computer. There was the yellow pages, and they weren't going to tell you there were two know. black dudes from Denver. Yeah. It's not the name of the karate <laughs> school, you know what I'm saying? What's the dude's name? I don't know. It's two black dudes from Denver. So how funny is that? Those two black dudes from Denver have a school in Vermont. And when I found out, I used to go over there on Tuesday when I was 418 pounds. You were 418 pounds? When I did the longest yard. Oh, man. I was 390 when I did the longest yard, 380. Wow. And that was probably August. And after the longest yard, I kept those habits. Pastrami sandwiches. <laughs> you know what I'm saying?